Here is Visconti Bordeaux, a red ink. Let's jump straight to the end with my opinion on this ink. The paper I'm using here is a Moramon Nemesine notebook. Red isn't usually a go-to color for me, but a good classic red always has its place, even if it's named Bordeaux. There's very little, if any, color variation by nib or by paper outside of normal expectations. This does give the occasional shading on some better papers. Now on non-fountain pen, fen, on non-fountain pen friendly paper, wow, that's a mouthful for some reason, it is duller and can appear a little washed out, making it maybe not good for grading papers. But like I said, a good classic red has its place and this is a good classic red. All of the writing samples are done with a Retro 51 P51 with a fine nib, a Retro 51 Corsair with a medium nib, a Retro 51 Lincoln with a 1.1 stub. The pen for today is a Caveco Sport. Now that we know my opinion on this ink, let's see how I got there with the first writing sample done on Claire Fontaine. Looking at the extra fine, we get a good classic red. There's no feathering and there is no spread. There is a couple of moments of shading that you could spot if you really wanted to. They're not the standout feature. I think the nice red is, but it is there. Look at the D in woods on the second line or the H in had also on the second line. You can spot those darker letters throughout the writing. Looking at the medium nib, it is the same tone as the extra fine. We get no feathering and we get no spread. We get no shading, just the good classic red the whole way through. Good monotone on the page, which really is the way that I prefer my reds to look. Looking at the stub nib, it is the same tone as it was with the medium and the extra fine. There is no feathering and there is no spread. There is some shading going on, which isn't normally a thing I care for in reds, but I think it's doing a very nice job here. Take a look at enemies on the first line. The second E is a bit darker than what's around it. Same with the last E. Was is a nice uniform tone until the down swoop of the S where it gets a bit darker. Dungeons, the G, that kind of melts into the E, my poor penmanship, is a bit darker than the rest of the word. I think some of the darker tones that are showing up here are doing a very good job of adding just a little bit more character to it. Looking at the back of the page, we get no bleeding and no ghosting. Like most inks, this one comes in a bottle. This is how the Pilot Custom 823 fits. And here is the Pelican M1000. Here is the ink level when you can no longer fill a Lamy Safari. There is approximately 10 milliliters of ink left. The next writing sample is done in a Portage Reporter's Notebook. Looking at the extra fine nib, we get the same tone as the Clairefontaine, though a little bit duller, with no feathering and no spread. Great news for the non-fountain pen friendly paper world. There's no shading here. There was a little bit that occurred with the Clairefontaine, but when you are on this paper, you shouldn't be expecting shading. I like the very uniform tone that I'm getting and the way it looks. It's not, you know, searing on the eyes as a red. Looking at the medium nib, it is the same tone as the extra fine, the same tone as the Clairefontaine, still a little duller as a tone though, like flatter than it was on the Claire Fontaine. No feathering, no spread. We do get some spots of shading going on. You see that width on the first line is a bit darker than dwarves underneath it. Some right next to width, the SO is darker than the M, which lightens just a hair and the E gets a little bit darker. Looking at the stub nib, we get the same tone as the medium, same tone as the Clairefontaine, still flatter as a tone with no feathering and with no spread. Yes, it does shave. Look at the dwarves on the second line. The is quite a bit darker than the word dwarves right next to it. And the W into the A has a dark spot, different 
like different on the third line, where the first F is lighter than the second F. It lightens up into the E-R-E-N, a very dark T at the end. Looking at the back of the page, we get no bleeding, no ghosting. We can easily write back here on the back of the page. Yeah, the page. There's a lot to learn by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is immediately put into water for 10 to 15 seconds. The one on the right, marked with a D, is let dry for 10 minutes before putting into water. The next writing sample is done on a national brand Steno notebook. Looking at the extra fine nib, we get the same tone as the Clairefontaine that shows that this is a very opaque ink in that it is not being affected by the tone of the paper at all. No feathering, no spread. Yes, it still has shading even with this paper. And not only a little bit. Look at only on the first line. The on is lighter than the Lee at the end pretty nice. The Elf King, we see some darker spots occurring, like the up and down stroke of the H on the. On the Elf, it's the bottom part of the F that looks a little bit darker, and the, key, the K and G of King are both a little bit darker than the N in the middle. Looking at the medium nib, it is the same tone as the extra fine, the same tone as the Clairefontaine. We get no feathering, we get no spread, we get a flatter tone than we had on the Clairefontaine. Now we get a couple of moments that are darker. I don't, I don't want to say it's not shading, but I kind of don't want to say it is shading. You call it the way you want on here. Them on the first line, the T is lighter than the H, but the M is lighter, M being the E M the on the second line the T is lighter than the he that ends it not bad really very surprising it doesn't really generally shade a lot on this paper looking at the stub nib it is the same tone as the medium the same tone as the Clairefontaine still a flatter tone than we had on the Clairefontaine we get no feathering we get no spread we get shading through quite a bit of this writing. Take a look at though on the first line. The TH is darker than the OU and the G lightens a little bit more. The last H, very dark. Horde, H is darker than the OAR and the beginning of the D, but the downstroke of that D gets much darker. Looking at the back of the page, no bleeding, no ghosting, easily writing back here. Fantastic. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink can be expected to perform on the page. And more importantly, how hard it may be to clean from your pen. The smear is allowed to dry for three days before testing it. The highlighter is on the top left. Pen flush is on the top right. One third bleach solution is on the bottom left. And water is on the bottom right. The next writing sample is done in a Rhodia notebook. Looking at the extra fine nib, we get the same tone as the Clairefontaine. We get no feathering. We get no spread. We get a little less shading that did show up in the Clairefontaine, though it is there. If you look at worked metals on the second line, the RKE is darker than the rest of the word in worked, and the T in metals is a bit darker than the rest. So there is some shading. Most notably here is it stands out with no problem on this quad rule. Looking at the medium nib, it is the same tone as the extra fine, same tone as the Clairefontaine. We get no feathering, we get no spread. We get, I think, a little better shading than we had on the Clairefontaine. I think it shows up a little bit better. Uh, not that it's a ton, but it's definitely there. I'm just looking at them side by side. Take a look at had on the second line. The H is darker than the rest of the word. Nothing that that's stand out huge looking at nothing right next to that on the third line where the no is lighter. The TH darken up a little bit. The N gets lighter again. And it's the downstroke of the G that starts to get a bit darker. <laughs> 
looking at the stub nib, it is the same tone as the medium, same tone as the Clairefontaine with no feathering, with no spread, with shading, I think showing a little more frequently, but not as dark as it did on the Clairefontaine. So for instance, in Thorin on the second line, on the Clairefontaine, I would have expected that TH to be a bit darker than it is here. The OR lightens up a bit, the I, gets a bit darker, the N lightening again. Nothing that's gonna make you angry looking at this red, looking at angry where the beginning of the A is darker than the end of the A. Light into the, D, the N, very dark G, lighter R, Y, except of course that downstroke. Looking at the back of the page, we get no bleeding, no ghosting, no problems, and no surprises. With over a thousand inks reviewed, let's take a look at some color comparables. Here is Ackerman Dutch Masters, their number nine. Here is Ancient Charm, the Phoenix. Here is Birmingham Pen Company, Bloomfield Red. Here is Camlin Scarlet Red. The next writing sample is done in a composition lab notebook. Looking at the extra fine nib, it is a little bit lighter and duller than it was on the Clairefontaine. We get no feathering, we get no spread, we get no shading, we get a solid red on the paper. Very good for students to use in their note taking. Looking at the medium nib, we get the same tone as the extra fine, little bit lighter and duller than it was on the Clairefontaine with no feathering, with no spread, with some shading that's going on. Take a look at that on the third line. Where the T is light and the H gets dark, lightening up at the A, a very dark T at the end, but there's other areas where you can spot some shading, like but on the second line, where the beginning of that B is darker. It lightens in the B, but it's in the down, the bottom part of the down swoop of the big bulb of that B. The B's like big bulbs and they cannot lie. The U lightens up a little bit and the T at the end does get a little bit darker. Looking at the stub nib, it is the same tone as the medium, lighter than it was on the Clairefontaine, still duller in tone than it was on the Clairefontaine. No feathering, no spread, yes, shading. I think the shading stands out here better than it did on the other nibs. Now, in all of this has been the quad rule, and even though it's been a little bit lighter and a little bit duller, I think it stands out on the quad rule where it doesn't kind of get confusing on the eyes at all. Looking at the back of the page, we get no bleeding and no ghosting. While it's nice to see ink in the same color family, I prefer to see ink to complement the color on the page. Here is Lamy Blue Black. Here is Karen Dash Infinite Gray. Here is Diamine Florida Blue. Here is Diamine Jet Black. The last writing sample is done on 20 pound copy paper. Looking at the extra fine nib, it is, a, I'm gonna say the same tone, maybe it's a tad bit darker. No, it's the same tone as it was on the Clairefontaine. Yes, it feathers, yes, it spreads, no, it does not shade. I think the feathering and the spread that we see going on here are not unmanageable in what's going on. And I would, act, I would just call it acceptable, serviceable even. Looking at the medium nib, it is the same tone as the extra fine, the same tone as the Clairefontaine. Of course, quite a bit duller as a tone. Feathering, yes. Spread, yes. Shading, no. Workable, yes. I don't see what's happening here as the end of the world. Again, we're gonna leave this as a serviceable. Though its duller tone does make it to where this isn't necessarily from this nib what I would want grading papers. Looking at the stub nib, it is the same tone as the medium, the same tone as the Clairefontaine, duller as a tone, of course. Yes, it feathers, yes, it spreads. However, the feathering is very, very minor and totally manageable. Same with the amount of spread. I think of these, the stub would look the nicest on the paper when it comes to grading, even though it has no shading, but no shading was expected. 
looking at the back of the page, you see the ink gets very deep into this paper, meaning you could not write on the back of this paper, but nothing bled through touching the page underneath. So what nib and pen do I think are gonna give the best writing experience with this ink? The paper I'm using here is yellow Rhodia paper. There is almost no variation by pen as they all come in with the same tone and very little, almost no shading. And even pointing it out is going after areas that it's there because it kind of is. So this can easily be a dealer's choice. However, in this case, I think the stub gave some additional character to the writing, making it a bit more interesting to me. So I go for a slightly wetter stub than I used in these writing samples, or even a very wet stub for that very nice classic red that this puts down. I hope you got something out of this video and thanks for watching. I want to let you know that the best way you can support this or any channel is to let retailers know where you heard of something if you go to buy.